showed up on Max Swords video. I was elated. All right. Y'all ain't know I knew that word, huh? But this is Kernball Space Program 4. Now listen, I hope I pronounced that right. Hooked on Phonics not working today. Let's get it. So when the metal hit his mug, he just sunk in place. 100K holla, chill in Bahamas. Come home to your crib and throw in your mama. What is good, Holla Squad? We are the Little Squad on the YouTube platform. Listen, today we're back with another reaction. Hey, I did see that he's uh, speed running Just Cause 2. All right? Because Just Cause 3 speed run was immaculate. All right? I can't wait for that video to drop. But today... We got Kern Ball Space Program 4, War. Now, my chat has notified me there is a number one to this, okay? So if y'all want me to react to number one, y'all just let me know down below. You know I got y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me hop into the video, bro. Let's get it. <laughs> Calf was good. Probably Playtime Chapter 2 came out today. We all know we play in Detroit, become human after this stream, bro. Okay. Um, that's not good. Is <laughs> <laughs> not live right now? Wow. <laughs> yeah, we're playing Detroit Become Human tonight. Hold up. That looked like a booty hole, all right? Y'all can say what y'all want. That is a booty hole rocket ship, all right? You know what? I'm gonna go. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Boy, ain't no way. See you later, idiots. <laughs> be the most action-packed intro i ever seen in the video in my life, not gonna lie. <laughs> Shit pussy! <laughs> Why is everything getting blown up? There's a story here. Oh, um, hey guys. So you're telling me, all right, my man made it off planet Earth and America made it to space. Now, if you don't understand the joke, you know what I'm uh, saying? Jimmy, <laughs> where'd he go? Uh, uh, he drove away in his space car. Hmm. Done. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Can I have my phone? What? No, oh, I mean, um, uh, y yeah, sure. All right. Well, I'm just gonna watch some YouTube now. I guess you guys can leave. Now we here, my boy. <laughs> this is the Walk Became Lawyer. <laughs> My man using YouTube to break out. W man, so.
That looked like that room from that game Corey Kinchin played. Doors? Oh no, it was a, it was a spooky, scary Sunday. Wait, Holy shit. Ego it's, was good. It's, it's, it's my brand new plush line. That's right, boys. I've partnered up. Plush line. Hold up. It's, it's my brand new plush line. That's right. Plush line. I thought he said something light. Now, I'm not going to say what the first word was, but you know what I'm saying. Boys, I partnered up <laughs> with Makeshift and made this little boy right here. Look at him. He let wants to enter your house. That's right. Your very own frog in a suit. Kick him, crush him, death him up aggressively. <laughs> Don't lose sight of him. He'll sneak into your walls and won't stop knocking. Put him above Story you. Was Imposing. Good. Striking. Dominant. This is a frog who thinks you are pathetic. Put him below you. Sad. Empathetic. And resigned to his fate. For real, this is the single highest quality plush I have ever seen in my life. The exterior is fleece. The suit is stitched on very well. The eyes are embroidered and hard. And... Oh... Oh my god. You can own one of these boys today by clicking the first link in the description or that horrible, smelly, slimy pinned comment. Do it fast. After 30 days, they will no longer be for sale. Gentlemen, I have one goal with this campaign. Sell more plushes than this goddamn stupid cat. Look at it. That's this tough. fucking stupid thing. What is wrong with it? Okay, that's kind of cute. This dumbass cat has sold over 1,500 plushes and we need to sell more. Click that link in the pinned comment and buy it. I assure you, you will not regret your decision. How many did he sell? Does anybody know? <clears throat> I gotta um, know. Finger <laughs> door. Mm. Press the. Mm. You go and flying mm. out though, my boy. Mm. Mm. Did he run past no guards? Oh shit! To get from the jail to this garage. That's not what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> hey guys, fancy seeing you again. How you been? Uh, sir, why'd you uh, run away? <laughs> My man threw him out like jazz, anyway, boy. From, we've uh, set a course Fresh for Elu, which, as you can see, <laughs> is rapidly approach. Oh shit! Oh, you're done. And would you look at that? Back at the start of the last video, stranded on Elu, Kevin has gone ahead and destroyed pretty much every base I built with his giant armada. Wagadugu. Annihilated. Urk, dead. Ops and Kerman, face down in a highly corrosive lake. Djibouti, it's seen better days, and most importantly... So this isn't like a Space Broker in 4, this is like the fourth installment of the same game. Ah, uh, we might have to go back to number one to understand. He's murdered all the Kerbals in the KSC, and taken it over for himself. <laughs> Gentlemen, the Bean Space Program is in shambles. All thanks to this rat bastard. Today, we're not building rockets, we're building weapons. Instead of fuel and oxidizer, so we like have gunpowder and high explosives. Instead of a noble quest to push the boundaries of discovery and science, we're here to kill, destroy, and conquer. My sources tell me that Kevin is rebuilding the KSC and has taken its 96 billion funds to build up military bases on other planets. Some bases are large, and some are small. Today we're going to destroy his shit-ass bases, and then I will kill him. Personally. So, let us begin. Let us begin. Balls, right? Okay, so first off, we need a sit rep. Kevin has in fact noticed that his hangar is empty and is currently searching for us with several hundred drones. Mm. One of those drones happens to be near us. Another thing that happens to be near us is this, the last base we built. <coughs> Kevin somehow forgot about Elu and didn't destroy it. So using this base, we can build a craft with weapons. Its goal will be to destroy the search drone driving around on Elu's surface looking for us. But to do that, we must first learn about weapons. War. Possibly the most ancient part of the human experience. Facts. Us apes have been killing each other for a very, very long time. And the first weapon used for this purpose was the humble rock. 
And then oh, we invented yeah. this thing, and these, and some of those, Clink them in and bam, the back bam, 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 boy. we invented chemical explosives, the topic of today's lecture. Now how does an explosive work? Well, it's all about releasing a huge amount of energy in the shortest possible time. If you've ever thrown a log of wood in a fire, you'd know that it burns way too slow to be an Facts. explosive. But it does have a lot of energy. In fact, if you were to somehow release all the energy in the wood at once, it would be the equivalent of 14 M67 grenades. So when you say unleash all the energy in the wood at once, what do you mean? <laughs> so, energy matters. And time matters, which is where explosives come in. A chemical explosive is a substance that can undergo a chemical chain reaction in a very short period of time. Now all these explosives do is release hot, expanding gas, which you wouldn't really expect to Fire. be able to do this. So, to kill Kevin's little surf drone, we'll get a nice fat bomb. Strap it to something innocuous and detonate it once it's close. Insane. For this job, we'll use this. A stroller. To prevent suspicion, we need a brave Kerbal volunteer to act as the baby. Otherwise, our plan would be far too obvious. The plan is simple. Drive up next to the drone and detonate the bomb. If we're seen, we play it cool and act as if we're just another baby in its stroller. The bomb is clearly in the stroller. Okay, enough talking. Let's go blow some shit up. Cruising. Can he shoot the rocket? Oh, my man turned into one of them kamikaze Excellent. drivers, boy. The threat has been eliminated. Even better, many parts of the drone are undamaged and can be salvaged for our use in our next mission. In particular, the radar and the guns. This will be quite useful because our next target is a satellite in low ELU orbit. But first, guns. How do they work? It's pretty simple. Gunpowder explodes, hot gas expands, pressure builds up behind the bullet, which pushes on it, I feel and like the bullet I'm is shot out of the barrel right at now. high speed. Guns have been around for quite a long time. Thanks. But they used to look like this, and were pretty shit. These old muskets required you to carry around two separate pouches for gunpowder and bullets. The powder would be poured down the end of the barrel, and the bullet would be placed on top. Then you get a big old stick and compact the powder and bullet, remove the stick, pour a bit of powder on this thing called the pan, cock the musket, full cock. And finally, you could shoot. <laughs> one bullet. Then you'd have to do that all over again. Eventually, someone realized that shooting once every 20 seconds was less than ideal, and proper Thanks. bullets, clips, belts, and magazines were invented. These Bro, could imagine the gun being as fast in the middle of war. Hold on, hold on, round. let me reload. But this is also far too slow. Y'all both taking your time. What? Instead of manually operating the bolt like a <laughs> peasant, your stuff people realized that the recoil of the gun could do that for you. Going crazy. And thus, the machine gun Lisa was good. Was born. Now, bullets so don't I actually like have that much kinetic energy, but they deploy it in a fraction of a second. Take this 50 BMG round. 50 BMG rounds can do this. Pretty impressive. Oh, Since the bullet is 45 grams and exits three? the barrel at 908 meters per second, we can use this equation and some quick maths to figure out that it only has about 18 kilojoules of energy. Or 5 calories. So, we've got a gun, we now we need school. some way of aiming it. If I take this gun and try shoot down something passing overhead, this happens. The gun is aiming at where the plane is, rather than where the plane will be, and isn't when leading its shots enough here. to get any hits. To lead our shots properly, we need to know the target's speed, distance, and direction it's traveling in. This is where radar comes in. Radar waves are simply another form of light with a much longer wavelength. If we shoot a bunch of radar waves at our target, a short amount of time later, we'll receive them back. Since we know how fast light travels, we can work out how far away an object is by measuring the time between sending and receiving the signal and dividing that by two. What? We can also tell how fast it's moving by either taking its position at two points in time and finding the distance it covers, or by using what's called the Doppler effect. Basically, since the target is moving at a different speed than our radar, the radar waves it reflects will either be a little bit stretched or a little bit squished. Now, if we combine this funky radar technology with our gun, we get this. The Goalkeeper CIWS. The radar allows the gun to track a target, find its range and speed, and then aim at the exact spot it'll be once its bullets reach that. Yo, listen, listen. Whenever uh, the next w world event happens, I'm going straight to the lobby, bro. I don't, I do not want. I'm not playing no games. These past couple weeks, I've been watching videos and learning about weapons I ain't know existed. All right, I'm good. I'm good. And would you look at that? One CIWS ready to go. All we need to do now is wait 
for that pesky satellite. Alright, next up, we're going to commandeer an ore tanker coming from one of Kevin's mining outposts on Bop. Now thus far, we've remained undetected, and I'd like to keep it that way. So instead of something big and flashy, we're going to build a ship with a laser weapon thing and a single Kerbal on a seat. The laser will destroy the guard drone, and the Kerbal will take over the tanker with the help of a very special weapon. This beautiful craft will be named... My man look like Thrones. salad finger in there, boy! So let's go. Hey, look, we we tasting the, the the BK chicken sandwich tomorrow. It better be good, cause if it's not, I'm on your nugget, my boy. I ain't talking about the nasty ten four dollar nuggets they got it. Oh. Now the guard drone is dead. We dismount <laughs> our Kerbal King. and send him in. <laughs> and the ore tanker has been secured. Now we can take it back to base and use its ore to make more mining stations to build our crafts even faster. But first, we've used guns, but what if I told you that we don't need gunpowder to accelerate our little projectile? Rail guns. Okay. Regular guns use good old expanding gas to move projectiles, but rail guns use magnetic fields and electricity. But why bother? Regular guns are just fine. It's all about speed. That 50 PMG round I was talking about earlier could okay. go at 908 meters per second. That's pretty dang fast, right? Yes. It is. But if you want to go faster, then you're out of luck. Gas-powered weapons rely on how fast the gas is physically capable of expanding, and 908 meters per second is approaching the upper limit. But railguns don't have an upper limit. In fact, the only limit on their speed is how much power you can dump into the system. So how do they work? Well, you get two conductive rails and put the projectile in between them, which completes the circuit. Once you fire, a huge amount of power is delivered from capacitors into the rails, which creates an incredibly powerful magnetic field and launches the projectile forwards. These bad- Bro, no! No! Listen, I'm staying in the house, bruh. Alright? I don't know what type of weapons they out here developing. I don't want no parts. I seen Eternals, alright? Y'all see my man was giving them technology? What they do? They made bombs. He said, these humans don't deserve to be saved. If we out here produce, what do we need this for? Huh? Huh? What, what do we need this for? Bad boys have been able to shoot projectiles at over 2,500 meters per second. Boy, ain't no way. <laughs> Which in KSP terms is orbital velocity. What we're going to use this technology on is this. Kevin has basically stolen the Awagadugu design and placed it in dual orbit to collect antimatter for his fleet. Now, if you remember last video, you know that per kilo, antimatter is pretty much the most explosive thing in the universe. And since Kevin's That's collector crazy. has a fair amount of it in storage, that makes this craft quite vulnerable. He's tried to cover for this fact by armoring up the area around the antimatter They're working container, on lasers? which is where our new railgun system comes in. The best way to cut through armor is to move faster, and railguns definitely make stuff move faster. So all you need to do is sneak in a small ship with a railgun, aim it at the antimatter storage, sit back, and watch the single, very big gamma ray firework. For this job, we've come up with this beautiful. Somebody plot. was literally sending off and said, "So, bullets aren't enough. All right, we need more." So far, the weapons that we've been using have been pretty baby. Sure, okay. setting off an antimatter container creates an enormous explosion, more powerful than but the rail we don't have any antimatter and we can't really make it. But what we do have <laughs> is uranium. Uranium, of course, can be made into bombs. Nuclear bombs. Nuclear bombs operate on a fairly simple principle. Fish. Fission or the splitting of atoms. You split apart okay. atoms, split atoms release energy and other particles, which go and split more atoms. This releases an enormous amount of energy. Nuclear weapon yields are measured in kilotons or megatons, referring to the equivalent amount of TNT that you'd need to detonate to match it. Now, the way you actually go about doing all this is the tricky part. There's only one natural element that's fissile, that being uranium. 
but uranium okay. is pretty common and by itself not very good for making bombs with. What you really need is a special isotope of uranium, uranium-235. The most common form of uranium, U-238, can't sustain a nuclear chain reaction, but U-235 can. The only problem is 99.3% of natural uranium is 238, whereas U-235 only makes up 0.7%. In order to make our bomb, we need to enrich this uranium from 0.7% to over 80%. This is very difficult, because chemically they're almost this? the exact same. The only useful difference is that U-238 has three more neutrons, which makes it ever so slightly heavier. The first machine used to enrich uranium was this, the Calutron, a mass spectrometer which enriched 0.7% uranium to 25% uranium at a huge rate of 50 micrograms per hour. This would take 20,000 hours or two years of continuous operation to make one single gram. It worked- Who? Who? Bro, what? What is this? Who was sitting in their house and said, look, we need to do this, all right? How long did he say? This would take 20,000 hours. 20,000 hours. Somebody tell me how long 20,000 hours is. How long is that? Or two years of Two Oh, here we go. Two years. To make one gram, bro. Continuous operation to make one single gram. It worked by shooting an ionized beam of uranium through a magnetic field. This magnetic field would deflect the beam into a collector. Since the U-238 is slightly heavier, it was deflected less than the U-235, which meant you could separate the two just a little bit. The U-235 for the Manhattan Project was made using this method, and thousands of calutrons were built, but later dismantled for better methods, like the gas centrifuge. <laughs> you said this man came... <laughs> Hey, yo, look. These bad boys take in uranium hexafluoride gas, put it into a centrifuge spinning thousands of times per second, and using the slight difference in mass, a very slightly more enriched stream of gas comes out. This needs to be repeated thousands of times. And then you get highly enriched uranium hexafluoride, which you can process later into uranium metal. Now that we've got the stuff, we need to find a way to make it go boom. The first nuclear bomb used in war, the little boy, used a gun design, where one part of the U-235 was shot into another using chemical explosives. Once the two parts combined, they became critical, and a nuclear chain reaction began. This was the second ever nuclear detonation, and was fairly primitive by today's standards. Pretty much what? every nuclear weapon these days is a thermonuclear weapon. Thermonuclear bombs are what a two-stage design, where a regular fission bomb explodes and sets off a secondary fusion stage. That's right, they use a nuclear bomb to detonate an even more powerful nuclear bomb. Pure fission bombs can at most achieve 500 kilotons of yield, whereas thermonuclear bombs can go from several hundred kilotons to tens of megatons. Okay, look, let me tell y'all a little stat I heard. I don't know if this is true, but they said if nuclear war started, bro, we have seven minutes, okay, before the whole world is done. Seven, okay? That's crazy. The largest of these devices was the Soviet Tsar bomb, which exploded with a yield of 50 megatons. However, the design of this bomb called for a 100 megaton yield, which was scaled back once they realized that that was dumb. Anyway, we're going to use all this funky nuclear technology and stick it in this. The B-83 nuclear bomb, a thermonuclear device with a maximum yield of 1.3 megatons. Our delivery vehicle will be this, a hypersonic interplanetary missile. Our target is Kevin's Lathe base, which is well defended with surface-to-air missile batteries and patrolling aircraft. It'll speed towards Lathe, turn on its air-breathing engines, fly low to avoid detection by radar, and deliver our little present to the base. So, let's launch. That music made me feel like I need to join a mosh pit or walk down a wrestling ramp. I ain't gonna lie. Nice. Moving closer to Kerbin, we have the planet you forgot exists. Drez. This planet is unremarkable. And of course, Kevin forgot to put any sort of military presence there whatsoever. We're going to use this blind spot to build up a very large presence, using the minerals in its surface to construct a weapon. A very special weapon. But that'll take some time and a lot of mining drones. Moving even closer, Duna, where Kevin has a fairly sizable presence, a base with a few tanks and a whole bunch of surface-to-air missile sites. 
In some simulations, this base proved to be a tough nut to crack. I tried a helicopter, but Duna's atmosphere was prohibitively thin. I tried some tanks, so but Kevin's battalion outgunned us very easily. I tried this high-speed bomber, which was shot down immediately. But then, I had an idea. You see, nuclear warheads okay. underwent many design iterations during their development. Increased power, deliverable versions of bombs, and smaller warheads. One such development was this, the W9. This warhead was small enough that it could be loaded into an artillery shell and fired out of a gun. This gun was called Atomic Annie, and could fire this projectile up to 30 kilometers away. The warhead itself had a yield of 15 kilotons, which was oh, equivalent- Oh, no, 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 Let me, okay, you got this big old machine right here, right? And you're telling me it could be fired by somebody pulling a string- Projectile up to- Like my boy down there, or did he hit a button? Now, if he hit a button, I totally agree. Now, well, first of all, I disagree. You know what I'm saying? We need to get these things up out of here. Alright, but he looked like he pulled something. Look at him. And fired out of a gun. This gun was called Atomic Annie, and could fire this projectile up to 30 kilometers away. The warhead itself had a yield of 50. There's no way I'm developing a weapon like that, and you fire it, pulling a string. Ain't no way. 15 kilotons, which was equivalent to Little Boy. Now, this cannon is great, but it's vulnerable to aeroplanes. Lucky for us, though, Kevin assumed that Duna couldn't support any plane since it has no oxygen, and didn't investigate further than that. So no planes to worry about. All we need to do now is send it over. So let's go. And are you okay? <laughs> oh, that's lit. My man, I thought he was about to do a 360 no scope. That's crazy. Hmm. Wonderful. Gentlemen, I think it's time we scale things up. <laughs> Moving back to Drez, as you can see, we've mined a lot of stuff and completed production of our special weapon. An engine. A really, really big engine. But where to move it? We've taken Jewel and Duna, I don't want to destroy Kerbin, and Moho, he's cool. This leaves one last Is that target. The moon? Eve. I don't like Eve one bit, and Kevin has built a lot of stuff on it. Sam sites, surface bases, aircraft, orbiting platforms. But, I don't have to deal with that stuff, or with Eve, if it's not there. Gentlemen, about to blow it up. You're stop done. the engines. He's done. Like a Sifiroff supernova uh, move from Final Fantasy VII, boy. Come on now. He's sick. He's sick. What the fuck? Turning our attention back to Kerbin, <laughs> this is where the bulk of Kevin's force is. He has hundreds of planes, tanks, and drones. But at this point, so do we. And ours all happen to be stationed in orbit, ready to strike at any moment. And now is that moment.
Holy fuck! It's all in there. Uh, space expert. I never seen somebody get minked something. up like that before in my life. An alien? Oh, you're done. <laughs> ah, Jesus Christ! You're an alien! I fucking knew it! You can't fool me, you little shit. I had you from day one. Alright, well. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go over here and punch in some numbers. Don't worry about it, Kevin. <laughs> and start charging. Alrighty, Kev. I'm sending you back to Proxima Centauri. Clearly, where you belong. Thank so you see you later, Kevin. My boy. Hey, we never meet ever again. W. This video is a W. I learned a lot. Terrify the space. All right. And that's it, fellas. I'm done. I'm free. My man just blow no up a whole KSP. galaxy. I'm going on a holiday for about a month, but once I'm back, big things are coming. So get subscribed. Follow me on Twitter. Yes, sir. Follow me on Twitch. Buy the frog. And I'll see you next time. Boy, this man Martin done outdid himself. All right. I learned a lot. I learned about rail guns today. Uh, what else did we learn in class? We learned that uh, a, a, a atomic bombs take 20 years to make one gram of what they need to make it. That's insane. All right, that is that is nuts. Look, uh, I'm gonna be inside the second I hear about nuclear war. Uh, I'm I'm forced quitting the game. I'm going back to the lobby. That's it. That's all I know. But y'all like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Until the next time, I see y'all. Yeah, nigga, I was broke. I ain't have a penny. Y'all was ready, kick a dope. Lay your ass on the floor. Taking everything about this bitch before I go. Niggas talking all that gang gang when the sugar puppet through their main vein. Swerve on them like a lane change. Fuck with youngin' cause we on the same thing. Granny died, it was caught at the fire.